and them and them know what your expectations are. That's that's a big thing right there. And and myself, m- me, my biggest thing is customer service. When people walk in the door, hey, how you doing today? You know, I mean, right off the bat, you got to just hit them with that greet. Even you know? if you're having a bad day. Yeah, yeah. Even if you even if you're having a bad day, you know. And and sometimes if you're having a bad day, just still, if you just say, hey, how you doing today? You know, because a lot of people walk in the door, they're having a bad day. You know, I mean, I, I I've seen them, boy. You know, and there's some of them that you can talk to, and and it's it's gonna be yes, no, leave me alone, let me eat my food. You know, I mean, it's it's you have some like that 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 are having a bad day, and you know, you just let them uh let them enjoy their meal and and hit the door. You don't kind of kind of push it, but uh, you know, the the biggest thing as far as is like you're saying to unlock that door. It's just making sure that your your quality is ready. Make sure that your staff is, uh, you know, you got a good team. And, and we've got people that have been there. Not- Me, Alpha, Home, Auto, Muscle, Builders, Rips, and Life is rich. Oliver's good. Alpha Shots is rich. And being a neighborhood restaurant, you know, I mean, pe- people come in and, you know, hey, did you watch the game last night? You know, uh, you know, who 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 you like tonight? The Celtics or the, or, or or Dallas? How cool! Is, how cool is it though? Owning a like an like, I mean, your restaurant now is like a landmark. Yeah. How cool is it to have like watching these kids graduate and know your name? Hey, Mister Ernest. Right. And then they have kids. Yeah, and, and, and to remember when they were little kids coming in there. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just like, man, where did this, where did, where did this, this little six-year-old come from? Now now he's 18, you know, graduating from Biloxi High. And, uh, you know, and then the parents come in, and, 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 they, and they've got grandkids. And you're like, wow, you got grandkids. I remember when your kids was, you know, li- little ones. So, uh, yeah. Why? Well, yeah. All right. Uh, Port City Cafe. Let's just dive in. Why? What? What made you get into the restaurant industry? Period. You know? Well, well, you know, I, I went to LSU, took some business management classes, and I've been in the restaurant business all my life. Started out with uh, Popeyes uh, in New Orleans, being from New Orleans, and Popeyes in the uh, uh, early '80s like was the Copeland days. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Al Copeland, flamboyant. Mm-hmm. You know, all of the Lamborghinis and the Porsches and the speed boats and and the fly uh, suits oh yeah oh yeah he was he he, he, he was a man he I used was, to love was, going to copeland's over there oh yeah but did you work so did you work uh in the management with him yeah yeah i worked on canal street uh canal and rampart right there by the singer theater and then a uh, canal and royal one block from bourbon street shit that thing must have been packed and oh yeah oh yeah was that the 80s yeah this was uh 87 88 so canal street was booming oh yeah oh yeah when we during mardi gras 24 hours a day, 24 hours. I mean, the, the, the medians would be packed with people, you know, camping out overnight for the parades. Well, most people, though, <clears> don't <throat> go to L- I wouldn't think most people go to LSU and want to go jump into a fried chicken, uh, you know, corporate. Yeah. Well, it, it, the restaurant business was always, always something I want to get into. And, uh, you know, just, just from when I was a little, little guy, my, uh, my, my very first job at 16 was McDonald's. And, uh, you know, and, and fry I, cook, I, I did some fry cook. Oh yeah. So, hey, so at May, like McDonald's, where do you start at? Uh, usually on the fry station, Okay. you know, dropping the fries and, uh, breakfast hash browns. And, uh, from there you go from uh toasting buns, which I don't even know if they do that anymore, but back in the day, you, you know, it was, it was a lot more, uh, fresh and, and a lot more, you know, cooked, to old, cooked, cooked. Now you've got so much stuff that's just pre-cooked and you just, you know, Warm it up. What's about now? It's about volume and profits. <clears throat> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Have you seen that stuff on uh, YouTube? Like how they how they package it all? I, I, I've seen. I've seen. I just got uh, done watching. Uh, I just got done before you walked in to get my food on. I just got done watching Shady Maples, uh, the the buffet. Shady Maples. Are you yeah. familiar with them? No, not. So not they're same. Pennsylvania. They're the largest buffet. They they like uh, a, a few million a year is what they take in. Jeez. So okay. it's. So their um rest uh their buffet uh is I think it's a two and a half hour wait. Jeez. It's in Pennsylvania. Yeah. But they make everything fresh. 
Uh-huh. And uh-huh. they stayed, so they stayed alive during the pandemic, and it's been in business for 30 years. Mm-hmm. But they cook everything fresh. Right, right. Because they have that uh, grocery store in the back of it. Mm-hmm. You can pull up Shady Maples, but it's massive. And they, it's sixteen ninety nine still. Jeez. Oh. But everything's done fresh. Yeah. Um, I was just watching them talk about, like, how, I forgot Wendy's. Remember when Wendy's had the buffet? Oh, yeah. Uh, the oh, uh, yeah. salad bars? Uh-huh. Did McDonald's ever do that? No. No, they never got into the buffets. Never got into it. But, oh, yeah, I remember Wendy's had a potato bar, you know, and uh, had nachos with chili. And uh, had, had a, had a, uh, I think they actually called it like a mega, mega bar, you know, salad bar, potato bar, chili bar. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, they were, they were into all, all so that. So how many years did you work for McDonald's? Were you just through uh, school? Yeah, yeah, through school. I was with them probably about three years. And then once I got out, Popeye's, I mean, they, they, they opened up 500, 500 Popeye's in about two years. I mean, they were just blowing and going, I mean, you know, mainly franchise, yeah. franchise. But in the New Orleans area, Al, Al was, he was, he was. He was putting them up, putting them up. I mean, the two on the two on uh, Canal Street, they were doing about two million a year. No drive through, strictly strictly eat in. You know, it's one of my favorite I mean, places ever. Mm-hmm. When I, you know, where I go on vacation, Mid City. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Emily, uh, Mid City. I still love New Orleans. Oh, it's a. I, I love it. Uh huh. It's a cool. It's a cool. It's cool, the people cool for me. Yeah. I'll yeah. Go, we'll go Mid City, and I'll go her. Um, Jared, one of her uh, best friends, he's a he's a basketball coach at that private school over there. Is it Jefferson, uh, or uh, it's right up there, Mid City? He's a he's a uh, football probably, coach, probably Jesuit. Yeah, Jesuit. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he kind of when we get in town, he brings us around, and yeah. I just I, I like going to this one one of my favorite bars. I I might say it wrong, Freda, Fretna, 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 a uh, bar, Street, Fretna Street, uh, Ferret. Uh, Ferret. 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 Yep. Another that's, that's bar. That's by Tulane. Yeah, another bar. Yeah. That old yep. wooden bar. Uh-huh. So I walk my, I go there and just meet the locals. Yeah. The best the best drinking with them locals is different. Oh yeah. They're oh, characters, yeah. man. It's uh-huh. Uh whether there's a mafia guy, uh-huh. an old mafia guy from New uh from New Orleans came from New York or Chicago yeah. and Yeah. They they're not scared to talk to you. No, and, but and, I love that. Oh yeah. Give oh, me yeah. A, everybody's friendly. Give me a, give me a whiskey mm-hmm. and let me sit on the porch uh-huh. and hear your stories. Oh yeah. This is why I have this. <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> they will they will sit and talk to you. Yeah, that's what yeah, I like. No doubt. You yeah. know, um, so my aunt Paula, uh, she's um, she's a parfait, so she's from Homa, hmm. and she's a full home Indian. Yeah. So I go, I remember as a kid going, uh, getting on the ferry and going to Homa and Dulac. Yeah. I just yeah. that city's. I mean, there's nothing like that city at night when it comes to life. Right. Like it just lights up. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's got a little smell at this because you know you don't. I tell you all the time you don't have to stay on Bourbon Street. No. No, it's not. Bourbon Street is not all in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. You can walk off, go to Pat O'Brien's. There's always something going at Pat O'Brien's. And the architecture. Yeah, yeah. How old them? Like, was it the Roosevelt? Mm-hmm. I mean, so that Cajuns is still. Uh, that Popeyes is still there. Oh yeah, yeah. The one by the Sangre Theater is not not going. Katrina kind of washed it. It got so much water and, and damage, it never came back. But the one on R- Royal, Royal is uh, is is still there. Did you live down there? No, I, I lived on the West Bank. Lived yeah. on the West Bank over in uh, Marrero, and uh, you know, I mean, I I I'd travel that GNO, travel that GNO every day, and boy, I tell you what, traffic. Oh man, just you know, but uh, yeah, but that was in the eighties. Where, yeah. where are you driving? Uh, in the eighties, I was driving a, a a Buick Regal, Buick Regal, two door, dark dark tinted windows, Kenwood stereo, chrome rims. Oh, you made you your know. money. Oh you yeah, saved your money. Yeah. That yeah. must have been a really nice car. It's like a like a Grand National. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like like Grand National. Okay. Was it that's Chrome Wheels, Kentwood. Uh-huh. Not cassette, or did they have C D players yet? That was a, a cassette. 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 Okay. Yep. Yep. And then uh, when when we weren't working, we was on Lakeshore Drive in Metairie. Lakeshore Drive. That was Weston Park. All of the all of the clubs along Weston Park. That's where Al used to keep his uh keep his boats right out right in that area. Speed boats? Oh yeah. All the speed boats. Did lo- didn't he pass away from cancer? Oh yeah, throat right. cancer. Yeah, throat cancer. Of all things, must have been them spices. He had all the that. Bombay. The dad always hung out at. Yep. Bombay yep. Bikes Little Club. Yeah, he used to have his boats over here. Yeah, he'd bring his boats over. I was too young. I mean, I, I, I didn't even get to go uh, drinking at the Treasure Bay boat. Yeah. Katrina, I, I mean, I was underage. Uh huh. I'm oh five. Oh man. So yeah. So yeah. that uh, that was a disappointing. I was really disappointed because my dream was to uh. Turn twenty one and have a night at the Treasure Bay boat. 
<laughs> Never happened. Treasure Bay. I still go to the, and I still go to the Treasure Bay the, over the side. Great, ca- they got good food too. Yeah. Oh, their crab, their crab legs. Not are, bad. Crab legs are good. So you go from, um, so you then you went. How long did you work for the uh, the Copeland family? Oh, uh, I worked. I worked with Popeyes probably to about uh, ninety, and then I went over to Taco Bell, of all places. Figure that. I love Taco Bell. Yeah. Well, Taco Bell, Pepsi Cola bought Taco Bell out. Yeah, they own and, like Doritos too, right? Yeah, yeah. Pizza Hut, Long KFC. John Silver's, KFC. Oh yeah, yeah. They're massive. Oh yeah, they they, they got into the uh, restaurant business, uh, and once they did that, they the the management salary when when they got involved, I mean, they increased everybody's management salary 50 percent, you know, and uh, so everybody was jumping ship. Everybody was jumping over to Taco Bell, and uh, and they came in. They built a bunch of Taco Bells, and uh, and that's how I landed here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Uh, I, I had a couple of stores in Metairie. Are they franchises too? Uh, the ones here on the coast, I think they may be franchised now. They were corporate, okay. but I think I think at this point now they're, they're, they're franchised. But at the time that you were doing corporate? Yeah, okay. that was with corporate. And uh, transferred here to the coast, we opened up seven Taco Bells in about two years. Best one's the Iverville parking lot. So I hung out at school, I hung out in that parking lot. That's yeah. where I hang out after school. Yeah, and that one was built after, after my time. But... Uh, when I came over where a big play's at on Veterans and 90, yeah. there was a Taco Bell sitting right there on that corner. And uh, when I they came over. a Taco Bell by Horseshoe? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I know. Oh, yeah. I used to go to the Bluxy Bar. Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> I used to go. I used to go. <laughs> hey, 2, 3 in the morning, we had some sights coming in that Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, man, man. Let me tell you what. It was, uh, there, were, there, were, there was some sights walking through there. I'm a buddy. Uh, yeah. I, so I did, go, I did go to the Bluxy Bar and, and Horseshoe. Yeah. So I know that well. Yeah. Uh, I know that road well. That's I didn't know they had Taco Bell. I know Big Play yeah. now. They got laser tag and <clears throat> theme parks and mm-hmm. and I think that's Brandon Wood uh, Woodridge, right? Yep. Yep. Woodridge. Yep. They had the uh, New Orleans. Um, well, they used to be. They're the Pelicans now, but they they were the uh, Hornets. Yeah. And uh, their family owned the owned the Hornets, and uh, sold it. Sold so it. they're the R. Uh, is uh, is his dad still around? I think so. The R D R W. They yeah, bought all the property after Katrina. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ain't they working on a, uh, trying to get a casino coming in? Well, they got the license. Did they? They got the license for That's it. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I think they've got uh, two years, uh, two years to, to to get it up. You know, get I've it, always get liked it. Brandon. Oh yeah, he's oh, always. Yeah. I mean, he's he took that he took that big play to like a trailer, a uh-huh. trailer. Uh huh. And kept it expanding it, expanding it. Yeah, and you know, was, snowball stand and. You know all kind of all kind of different things. Laser tag now he's got he's got back there. And how but long the, did you work for Taco Bell? Uh, I was sit there. I was with them for about three years. When we opened up the last Taco Bell, that's when I when I went on my own. I got tired of the corporate world. I got tired of looking at the P and L statements and looking what the bottom line was, and then looking at my salary. And I'm saying, wait a second, this this is it's not quite adding up. What um so, what year was this? Uh, this was about ninety four, ninety four. And you went on your own, and <clears> was the first yep. thing you started. Uh, over in Orange Grove on Dido Road, uh, this was about a year before Captain Al's opened up, and it was called the Tiny Diner, Tiny Diner, and uh, there was two uh, two ladies that owned it prior to to me. I had a partner at the time, me, me and another guy. We opened it up together, and uh, it was tiny. I mean, I think we might have had 30, 35 seats in the whole place, and uh, we opened it up, you know, built it up. Started doing delivery business back then in '94. We delivered all of Seaway Industrial, Avondale Shipyard. When they were there, uh, the Grand Casino had their corporate well, that was offices. Smart, because there's a lot of workers. You, yeah, yeah. Would you, would you like cold sandwiches, or y'all did like roast beef po' boys? Oh, we did. We did. You know, plate lunches. Okay. Uh, hamburger steak, country fried steak, uh, po' boys, hamburgers. Did a little bit of everything. We had a fax machine, and they faxed us the orders like eight, nine in the morning. And everything that every time that fax machine was start going off, I'd be saying cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Keep on going, baby. Keep on going, baby. This is before waiter or was <clears throat> waiter. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Way before all that, all that time. I'm not that. I'm not that fine of uh, the the delivery services. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm good with Domino's. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So I've had some not the best experiences with the uh oh. with the random people taking my orders in the cars. Uh huh. It's scary. It's a little different. We get the DoorDash drivers in, and I, I just look like whoa, you know. <laughs> so, so you do DoorDash? Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah. You, that is the same concept, guys. Is what he's saying is like, for his business, he had thirty-five seats. 
he found out like you know back Seaway's still booming, but mm -hmm. back in the day they had pretty much shipyards. Yeah, and, Grand Casino. Yeah, thousands and thousands of workers. So he figured out how to do delivery so that he'd load up. Would y'all have a box truck or just a regular van? Just a regular van. Just a uh, regular van. Regular van and, and drop off lunches to guys working all day long. Mm -hmm. No delivery charge. You know, I wouldn't charge the price. Either. Yeah, whatever the price was. Was there a minimum on the mill? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, we with with it being Seaway, we'd get ten fifteen orders. You know, per per business. You know, it was it was never just a single, just a single. You know, uh, order now like they do with DoorDash. DoorDash, you can just get one one single. You know, a burger and fries, and they'll pick it up, go deliver it to them. What was your uh, What was your uh, your iconic? Uh, I mean, I know you have that. Your uh, roast beef is one of your iconic ones at the new restaurant. But what is your yeah. iconic back then? Do you remember like that one meal? Uh, boy, I'd, I'd probably say our fried catfish, fried catfish. Ooh. You know, I mean, we cocktail we, sauce. Yeah, we use that Delta Pride, Delta Pride catfish, pond raised, pond raised catfish. It's not that river catfish, pond raised catfish, and it's uh. It doesn't have that strong fishy taste to it, and it's uh, it's it's probably the best. Did it come with uh, which uh, cut fries and hush puppies? Yeah, hush puppies, coleslaw. <sighs> you got to do hush puppies. Yeah, and our coleslaw, we make it from scratch. I mean, we'll make our own hush puppy. I mean, our own coleslaw dressing. So, how, how long the, did um, was it? You said the tiny mm -hmm. diner. Tiny diner. Yeah. How, well, how long did that last for? Uh, well, we we opened in uh, like ninety four, and then ninety nine is when we went to downtown Gulfport. And uh, when we opened up in downtown, downtown Carport, we originally called it Tiny Diner Number Two, but uh, me and my partner we split up. So he kept Orange Grove, he kept Tiny Diner Orange Grove, and I changed the name Tiny Diner Two to Port City Cafe. Was it an ugly split up? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have y'all have y'all kind of uh, fixed everything since then? No, no. To this day. To this day, there were there was some false imprisonment involved. That, tell, that tells you what you need to know. What's that? Um, what is the what is the um, what's the old western? The two families. That had that movie. Hmm. You know, you know what I'm talking about? The uh, that that they're like the they're fighting. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to remember it. Pull it yeah. up. Um, well. you, if you know who it is, <clears throat> the uh, the rivalry. So so y'all separate it, and you're like, take that one. I will take this one. Yeah. And then you yep. change the name. Yep. Yep. And and the name came about, uh, you know. I talked to people downtown Gulfport, and I said, you know, I'm 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 th I'm gonna change the name, and uh, they said they said, what about Port City? I said, Port City. What is what is Port City? They said, you know, back in the day, you know, Gulfport was called Port City, because of the port, because of the port and the ship wheel and everything, and uh, so I just said to myself, I said, well, you know, Port City Cafe. Holy shit! That's how you named yeah, it, and that, and that's how it came about, right there, Port City Cafe. And uh, if you ever watched uh, Gulfport High School basketball, their center court on their gymnasium is a ship wheel. Port City, it's, it's a ship wheel right there. They actually have a Port City Bowl, Port City Bowl that uh, Gulfport plays now every year. Um, it's kind of like a jamboree game, but they call it a Port City, Port City Bowl, and it's got the uh, ship wheel. And uh, so I, I get people from time to time say, is that... Do y'all sponsor that? Is that, that y'all sponsor? Say, no, that's that's not our sponsor. It's, it's just Port Port City. So, so, so yeah. you were grieving and you changed the name. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was actually Hatfield McCoy. Oh, there you go. Hatfield McCoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. So, yep. so, so we right have there. to pull stuff up. If you see me on my phone, <laughs> I'm not. I'm listening. Yeah. I'm listening, Mister Ernest. Yeah. But I, I, we got to research this. Uh huh. But that's uh -huh. what that is. That's exactly. Yep. Exactly right. So 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 yeah, we 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 split up. Um, now, was this business making money? Uh, downtown? Yeah. Uh, for the first two years now. So I mean, we the, were, was uh, Dito one making money? Oh, yeah. Oh, our, our rent there was 500 a month. 500 a month. We had a 10-year lease at 500 a month. We, we were doing that in one day. And how long did that one? Uh, how, so you kept, you put your head down. You, yeah. You, how old were you then? Uh, oh, boy, let's see, 98. I would have been uh, 33. 33. So in 33, yeah. 59 now broke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Taking a risk. Yeah. And your other, and your, uh, other I, partner. I, I, I'll tell you how broke Similar I was. Similar stories. I'll tell you how broke I was. And I, I tell the story to a lot of people because they think, you know, you're in the restaurant business. You got a lot of money. You're rich. Um, uh, we, we had an ice machine there and the ice machine broke. Uh, a new ice machine was $1,200. We didn't have $1,200 to buy a new ice machine. I was going to uh, Bay Ice around the corner from us, 
and uh, I was spending about fifty dollars a day on ice bags of ice. Uh, you know, for the drinks and everything, we were open breakfast and lunch. Um, so fifty dollars a day at seven days a week. That's three hundred fifty dollars over a month's time. You know, that's fourteen hundred dollars. But we just didn't have the twelve hundred in the bank to buy the to buy the ice. Um, so I talked with uh, the Whitney Whitney Bank, and uh, credit wasn't good enough. So the the bank manager ate in the restaurant. His name I never forget. His name was John Walton. John Walton of all names. You know, you think Walmart. Yeah. John Walton. He was a, he was a branch manager, and I came in. I explained it to him. He said, "Look," he said, "I'll, I'll make you the loan." He said, "But uh, you you got to pay it." So it the it was a 12, 12 month twelve month uh, payment. Hundred I think it was 120, 120 a month or so. About one hundred fifty le- uh, interest on it. Yeah, yeah. Within six months, we had it paid off. Because the fifty dollars I was paying for ice every day. But you also opened up another credit line. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because like, yeah. oh, Ernest. Yeah, yeah. You need some more money, Ernest. Right, right. So we paid it off, you know, within six months versus a year, and uh, got a brand new ice machine, bigger than the one we had before, and uh, you know that's just one of one of the stories as far as you know being broke and trying to become successful and you know work work in the now, business. Were you married at the time? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yep, yep. Kids. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We had three, three kids, three kids, uh, young, young kids. Uh, the kids worked, worked in the restaurant uh, up until they graduated high school. Uh, summer times, you know. Back then, uh, in '98, I had a uh, let's see, six-year-old, seven-year-old, and a nine-year-old. Summertime, they were in the restaurant working. When school went back in, they were excited to go back to school because they knew they could sleep in a little later. Cause they'd get up for summertime, you know, and, and they were coming in the restaurant with me. I'd be in there five, six, five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. They're coming in with me. And, uh, you know, but I mean, you know, they, did, did you pay them anything? Uh, well, you know, I mean, we bought them school clothes and you oh, know. they didn't get paychecks. <laughs> no, 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 there was no paycheck, but you know, I mean, we still, we still did vacations and you know, I mean, they, they did. They did get uh, you know Xbox and you know nice things and and, and stuff like that. But no, no, no. It's no the best out. child labor laws I've ever heard. Of. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. But, but they learned. Yeah. I mean, yeah. My, my first job. I mean, I worked did work with work with dad if, on on doing odd jobs and stuff. But I worked as a IP uh, dishwasher. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I yeah. mean, because that was all we're talking about like leads people making that twenty five cent more think they don't have to work right right them people suck yeah like yeah you, you, you bring down everybody's energy mm-hmm. um but no that's so you did you were there what same spot 20 years yeah. was that 13th street or 14th what street? Four, 14th street uh right across from uh, triple day drugs mm-hmm. and uh oh, i get so sad when that place closed oh i tell you mr jim mr jim day you know i mean he he worked there up until he was about 91 and then, it, you know, he passed away. Well, you know my co-founder of Carter's Champions is John Carter. Oh, really? Yeah, John Carter is like my best friend, my brother. Man, yeah, yeah. Um, but John's office, uh, old office on 14th Street. Uh-huh, Century 21. Now he's right by you on Pass Road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when John opened up, we were still downtown. Uh, and where he opened up, it was, it was the FBI building when we moved in to downtown Gulfport right there in 98. And when we moved in, you know, it was a brick, unmarked building, dark tinted windows, you know, and I, and I'd always say, what, what is, what is, what's in that building? You know, we'd always see unmarked cars and everything. And, uh, you know, I mean, being downtown as judges, attorneys, police, you know, and I said, I said, what is that? Then? That's, a, that's the FBI. I said, oh man. You know, right. I get for people like me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just like, man, you know, this, this is, uh, if you, if you wanted anything, this is not the place to be at. Cause I mean, these guys, you know, and they'd walk over to the restaurant, get coffee, get breakfast and. You know, that's one thing. One thing about uh, downtown, when they passed that open carry law, I see all these businesses downtown put the sign up says, you know, uh, you, no weapons allowed or anything. And here we are in downtown Gulfport, and you got all these judge bailiffs, and you got all these undercover cops. You got the FBI, the DEA, the U.S. Marshals, all these guys, and all these guys are carrying. And yet I see these si- signs says no, uh, you know, no weapons. I'm saying to myself, come on, man. You know how many people's in here with weapons on them right now? I think they're. I think they're doing a little better. Yeah. I, mean, I think. Uh, I know they're going to be. You know, they're making changes. And um, was that a big? Uh, so, so you were there twenty years. 
Yeah, yeah, we sold it in 18. Uh, the thing that really put us on the map was Hurricane Katrina, believe it or not. Can you tell people, because people probably know stories that you think you just close your store down. Yeah. Can you share oh. a story about why you're not there in downtown Gulfport yeah. anymore? Yeah, well, uh, 2018, we were we were offered, uh, you know, a guy came in and wanted to buy us out. Uh, got it on Pete's, Pete's Eats. Uh, Rick, um, yeah, I can't think of his last name. His first name was Rick. And uh, they do the they do the uh, catering at the airport for all the airplanes, the uh, the meals and everything. And uh, you know, he said he said if you're interested in selling, we're interested in coming downtown. And uh, I said e- even even said would you be offering to would you be willing to finance? I said sure. So we financed it and uh, gave me so much down. Financed it for two years. And uh, January of twenty, he made the last payment. And then boom, February twentieth when COVID, COVID came in full force. Uh, pretty much shut down downtown Gulfport as far as the bankers and the attorneys, the courthouses. And uh, he managed to hang on to it for about maybe another six months. And uh, that's all that's all they could do with it. They wound up, they wound up closing it down. And uh, and I was uh, subleasing it to him. So, of course, he closed down and the lease falls on me, you know. And uh, we hadn't been there for about two and a half years. So then I'm saying to myself, well, what, what, what am I going to do with it now? Reopen it? And uh, so I called the landlord, and I said, look, I said, uh, you know, this COVID is, is causing Rick to have to uh, shut it down. And uh, and I, I called him on a good day because uh, I still had about three years left on the lease. And he said, uh, look, he said, leave everything in the restaurant, all the equipment, all the furniture, everything. Bring me the key, and we're done. I brought in the key. I brought in the key, you know, because yep. I, I had about uh, 80000 left on the lease. Yeah, that, look, I had... um. I had my mattress store over there in uh, Gautier, Mr. Larry Whitehead, and I had to shut down with uh, an extra year of my lease. Yeah. But I never missed a payment. Uh-huh. So when I when I uh, called him, I said, look, I said, I'm done. Right. I can't keep on bandaging this and trying to hope that we can get more people in the door. You know, my Im- inventory went up 48%. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like my price. They did 21 increases on me. Yeah. Then my delivery trucks went from like three days to six weeks. Man. And it just. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen the writing on the wall and I was going to keep making it, keep, you know, keep putting myself in debt for it. Mm-hmm. But me and Emily made the decision to shut it down. And yeah, just because I always paid. So, you know, always pay, pay your rent. Right. Because he's like, you know, he was sad because I mean, they, they said, he said, uh, Monica was talking to me and she's like, I, I mean, out of the people that he, he rents from, I've, I didn't never miss a payment. Mm-hmm. I never played that. Yeah. Yeah. We were the same situation. We always paid the rent every month. He cut everything. my, he cut my, like pizza came in next door to me and they cut my power for two days. Jesus. And then Mr. Larry came down there from Mobile and was like, that nah, it's whatever. <laughs> it was just whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was, I was like, fine. Because he was always so nice to me. Mm-hmm. And I knew that pizza hut was, I was paying eight fifty a month mm. for Howie 90. Yeah, and he never went, he never went up on my rent. Ah. He never went up on my rent, but I know Pizza Hut was a lot more. Oh yeah, and I oh, knew yeah. that was I knew that was important to him. Right, right. Because to get that, he wanted that corporate money. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. laughed about it, and he said, "I'm sorry, so I'll take care of you." I said, "No, you always take care of me." Yeah. So for them two days, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what, Katrina, Katrina was a big blessing to us. Uh, I mean, it was unfortunate for a lot of people and everything, but we we uh, the day after, or actually the day of the storm, one of my neighbors worked for the power company. And uh, he knew I was downtown, and uh, he said, look, I'm going to go down there and start surveying the damage. You want to ride with me? And uh, so we went down 49, and, you know, I mean, I'm seeing building after building just tore up, red lights down. I mean, just debris scattered everywhere. When we got to 14th and 90 right there, uh, there was so much debris that had washed up on Highway 49 that tripped the day right in the corner. I mean, the windows was busted out, and there was just debris scattered everywhere. So I look over to the left at our restaurant right there, we had two busted windows out and uh, maybe six inches of water. That was it. And uh, so he dropped me off. He went and did what he needed to do. He didn't come back and pick me up. But when he dropped me off, I went in, and uh, the door, it was a wooden door, and the water had expanded the door. I could barely get the door open. I mean, I had to, I had to really work on it to get it open. But I went in there, all the tables and chairs sitting in place. Uh, there was still a little water in it. There was that, that soot. That mud soot yeah. that had washed in there. Was was VAT floors? Uh, it was concrete floors. Concrete floors. So. Concrete, yeah. Even yeah. better. So we were lucky there. The building itself was built in 1928. 
1928. Uh, no drop ceiling. So the building, you know, it was all all high high ceilings and everything. And uh, so the very next day, I brought my hose pipe from the house, brought some, brought some bleach, degreaser, got in there and just started hosing everything out the front door. And uh, I'm in there, and uh, this, this guy walks in. He must have been about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, wearing rubber waders. And I'm hosing down, and uh, he says, man, he says, he says, you, you've got to be the luckiest person on the, and on the coast here. I said, you see those buildings across the street? Let's up a little more. Yeah. Yep. He said, you see this building? I, I said, you see the buildings across the street on 13th Street? They diverted the debris and the water and even the wind away from us. You know, because we were in the middle of the block. Had right. we been on the corner like Triplet Day, uh, we'd have got a bunch of the water and, and debris and everything. And uh, so, so he comes in, and he says, how you doing? I'm Harry Smith. Harry Smith with CBS News out of New York. I said, man, no kidding. And uh, he said, how long before you get reopened? I said, probably maybe a week, two weeks. He said, no way. I said, yeah. I said, uh, the president of Mississippi Power eats here all the time. I said, I'm going to go talk to him. I said, I know we're going we're gonna to get power. <laughs> and uh, and, I, and I'm not kidding you. It's about networking. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. Uh, his name was Anthony Tapazzi. Anthony Tapazzi, sharp guy, sharp guy. And uh, his family was in the restaurant business in Birmingham. And uh, he went to Auburn uh, for engineering and worked in the restaurant, you know, all his life. His dad had a barbecue restaurant in Birmingham. So he'd always come in the restaurant. We'd always talk restaurant business and everything. And this guy is the president, CEO of Mississippi Power. And, uh, so they were over on 28th Street where their command center was, Mississippi Power. Yeah. I went over there and I said, look, I said, if you can get us power, we can start feeding y'all. He said, all I need you to do is sign a waiver releasing us from any liability when we turn your power on. He said, well, we're not coming to inspect the building. I said, let's do it. I signed that waiver. The next morning I pulled up. From the outside, I could see the ceiling fan spinning in the restaurant. And uh, so so I asked him. I, I called him. I said, I said, what do you need from us? He said, we need 600 lunches and 600 dinners. I said, Huh? <laughs> And uh, he, he said, what do you charge me? I said, $10 a plate. And Business was booming. Oh, I called the employees. I said, the vacation is over. Over. And, uh, and of course, they were ready to come back, Yeah, you know, because the bills don't stop. The bills don't stop. They, they, they just, they're just mounting up. And uh, so we got, them, we got them in, and I said. Uh, and how, how long were you doing this for? Uh, we did that uh, for about three weeks. You at, said at, lunch, 600 lunch, 600 dinners? 600 lunch, 600 dinners. Yeah, yeah. And uh, at the end of the night, they'd cut us a check. We'd drop off the last meal. 12 grand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd cut us, they'd cut mean, us a check. I mean, how often were you doing that? Oh, it seven days a week. Seven days. For a year? Six months? Oh, no, no. no. This, this was about, uh, it, it was about two months, two months at 1,200. Then, of course, once everybody's power got turned back on, well, then it started leveled up, leveling off. But we did it probably all the way till about the end of October. You know, it, it leveled off to about a hundred, hundred a day, fifty a day. Yeah, still. Um, yeah. So, uh, so you know, we're 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 in there and we're putting together these meals, getting all the food from Sam's. Everybody says, "Where'd you get the food from?" We're going to Sam's at two o'clock in the morning, and Sam's, uh, another another good uh, relationship. We've we've chopped from Sam's since day one with the tiny diner, day one tiny diner. But we go to Sam's every day except for Sunday. So they know you. Yeah, yeah. So, so we had great, you know, networking connections right there. Yeah. And I called them up and I said, "Look, this is what we're going to be doing." And a general manager said, "Come in." He said, "You know, we don't, we're not going to have cashiers." He said, "Give what you need to do." He said, "And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll just square up when you come back, come back later on during the day, and uh, and we'll, 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 you know, write a check or use a debit card, and we'll, we'll square up then." So uh, they would write down what we're getting and everything, process it when I come back. And we did that every day. The very first morning that we went up to Sam's and we bought the groceries. Seven hundred twenty thousand dollars for two months of meals. Look, look. That's, that's why I say that, that 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 that's why I say that that put us on the map. That put us on the map real fast. Um, so so we uh, the very first day. Well, they had a they had a curfew from six at night till six in the morning. So we go up to Sam's get the groceries. We're driving down to downtown Gulfport. At the railroad tracks, there's a National Guard and two Humvees. And they got about six, eight soldiers out there with their M16s. And here we come down. And they're, uh, they're saying, where, where are y'all going? There's a curfew right now. 
I said, the next block up on 14th Street, that's Poor Titty Cafe. I said, we're cooking for Mississippi Power. And they said, no, you're not. Nobody has power. I said, we're cooking for Mississippi Power. <laughs> if, if we're cooking for Mississippi Power, we got power. And uh, so the guy takes his flashlight, and he's looking in the truck and everything, and he sees all the groceries, so he knows I'm not BSing. He says, uh, you're going to have coffee? I said, oh, yeah. He said, good. Send us about, about eight cups, eight cups of coffee. He said, and... Uh, he said, we, he said, you won't have no problems down there. And uh, so, so we made the coffee and sent it up there to him. From that point on, as soon as we'd drive through, a couple of the soldiers would come to the restaurant. And, uh, and it, was, it got to the point where they would make the coffee. They would, they would get it and bring it, bring it up there. They had some thermoses, and they'd bring it up to their yeah, command they center. It. Yeah. Oh, I worked yeah. For, I worked for FEMA then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was making, I don't uh, know, 2500 a week. Right. Oh, yeah. There was some big money to be made. I was making it. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. do it. I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, some depends on what I had to do, but nah, that was fast money. Yeah, well, when it was all over, over and done, went to Turan Foley, and bought me a C five ninety eight Corvette, black black Corvette convertible. So I had, I had something to show for it. And that's like you just <laughs> rolled up into that. Was that a two thousand twenty three? Yeah, yeah, C eight, C eight, C eight. Yeah, you're just a Corvette guy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've always been. Now, always do you been sell Corvette. the Corvettes or you keep them? Uh, I I, I sell them. Uh, this one right here, I'll probably trade in and get a 25, the, the Grand Sport. Grand Sports are sharp. They, yeah. They're sharp. So I grew up with uh, Carl B. Hamilton. Yeah. Do you know who that is? Uh uh-huh. So he was like, he was the president of the Car- Corvette Club. Oh. So when I, his son, Bryant, had a Supra, and his dad had Carl B. Hamilton. He was the home builder that built the neighborhood behind Applebee's. Hmm. And, um, heck, when Katrina came, he, his house got hit, and I had to get Brian my clothes. But Mr. Carl had on, on the um, Highway 57 before his divorce, he had a Corvette garage where he had a, was it a 56? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah. 1,500 miles. Yeah. Like a ZR1, 95,000 miles. Whew. Original. Right. He had, uh, I think, did he have a Lingland filter? He had the cream of the crop when it comes to vets. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, I mean, this ZR1, 95 was like, he was like a collector. Oh yeah, he's a president them. of the Corvette Club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I belong to the club club here on the coast. So right? I don't think he's a president anymore, but he started that. He was a big part of that club. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't, I don't think. I think he has now. I mean, he might have a convertible. Uh, he might have a Corvette like you. Yeah, but he yeah, don't. He don't. Great. He doesn't do the multiple Corvettes anymore. Oh okay. I think he just drives them. Yeah, yeah. That's why I do it mine. I drive mine every day. Not every day. Weekends cruising the coast. Uh, this weekend with the scraping, I'll be out there with the scraping. You know, there'll be there'll be some Corvettes running out there. So, yeah. Is it faster than your old one? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Do you like the rear en- the rear engine? Yeah. So that was it for you. Like you were just like, let me just buy a Corvette. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, um, at the time when you bought the Corvette, married, had kids. Mm hmm. Well, they're all grown now. So now you, now you can get a Corvette. And uh, are you still you married? Know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. your wife allows you to have a Corvette. <clears throat> uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. She okay. tries to drive it every every once in a while. I said, no, no, no. If she so. wants a Corvette, can she get one? <laughs> she she could get one, but she she she's not a Corvette. She she she'd rather a, a Jeep, a Jeep to haul all the grandkids in. We got ten grandkids. That's a lot. Oh yeah. Do you know all their names? Uh, I, I know I, I know most of them. <laughs> I know most of them. I mean that's cool. I mean, I, I'm so I uh, so I have a um I have a Ford Lightning, black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I have bought that was my dream truck, and I, it's at my buddy, it's at my buddy's house. But uh, I'm a f- lightning guy. Yeah, yeah. Not these electric cars. Guy. I'm talking the 04 black. Uh huh. Never getting rid of it. Yeah. But I'm I enjoy <clears throat> I enjoy that lightning. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think I can see why the Corvette guys enjoy it too. Now yeah. for me, there's the best Corvette ever made was that uh, that 2005. Mm-hmm. Uh, CTSV, yeah, with yeah. the six speed. Yep, yep. That was that's a Corvette. Yeah, I yeah. mean, people can say whatever. That's a Corvette, right? right and I, right. I, I remember driving one of them. Blew my mind. My buddy, my buddy Scott's got a um. Oh eight, oh nine, with about nine on horsepower, CTS. Yeah, two-door. yeah. And you want to talk about scary? Uh huh. I think that car is all of. I think that car's uh, high tens. Yeah, and then Jimmy, my buddy Jimmy had a, um, he had a, a C a C six Z O six, the C O six that year, mm-hmm. and that thing was running like ten, no nine nines. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, this this one I got in a quarter. It'll do, it'll do about ten eight, ten seven yeah. in a quarter. It's got the red interior or yellow no. interior. No, it's it's, it's black, uh, black with the yellow stitching, and then it's got the yellow yellow seat belt. What made you want to go with the black and yellow? Uh, just to get away from just that plain black, you know, just something to offset it, offset it. So how yeah. excited were? You? How long did it take you to get into delivery? Oh, over a year. Drove you crazy? It it came in the weekend of Hurricane Zeta. Mm. Hurricane Zeta. That shit cost me two grand. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Turan, Turan Foley called me and they said, your car's in. I said, keep it. Keep it. I don't, I said, I'm not picking it up during no hurricane. I said, keep it over there in your warehouse. Something happens to it, it'll be on them. So I said, I, said, I, don't, I don't want it. So it took so, an, so it took a year. What do you think about the market? And the, how, where is the market on these vets now running? Oh, it's, it, it's, it's leveled off. Nobody's flipping them. Nobody, the, the dealers got smart. They knew what people were buying them, you know, for, for 110, 120, and then flipping them for 150. And, uh, and, and now if you buy it, you have to sign a waiver that you won't sell it because if you sell it, it waives the warranty to the new buyer. So, yeah. So who's your, so, um, so you go to Tranfolo is your place? Yeah. Yeah. Jim, Jimmy Overton was, was over there at the time. I don't believe he's there anymore. Uh, Todd Good, Todd Good was over there for a bunch of years. Uh, Phil's over at uh Bob Bort- Borte. Yeah, Bob Boyd. No, you know uh, yeah. Phil. The Iberville. Yeah. Uh huh. Phil's cool. Phil, yeah. Phil's yeah. my Neptune line. Yeah. He's he's GM over there. So if you huh. uh, if you need me to call him, I will for you. Yeah. He yeah. uh if you if you decide you want to go because I tell you what Phil does make things happen. I will say that about Phil. Huh. Yeah, he's on um him and Todd Trench Trencher. Yeah. Uh, the Bacardi. So uh, Phil Phillips, the uh, chair of the board. Hmm. Okay. He's a straight shooter, but he's he's good at like. I mean, I've been watching him get customers Corvettes because he, he likes that stuff. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he's a car geek. Yeah, yeah. We we have our uh, Corvette Club meeting right there at Bob Boyd every the the last Thursday of each month. So every time we go, you know, every, all the Corvettes are out there in the parking lot. I mean, they'll be forty. So you get you love doing that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Have yeah. you met a lot of good friends through that? Yeah. Oh yeah, a lot, well, lot of interesting people. Why don't they go to uh, the cafe and hang out? Well, the, they, load her down. Yeah, take their money. <laughs> yeah, we we've had dinners. You know, after the meeting, uh, most people go to different restaurants. You know, and 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 we've had them come over to the to the restaurant over there. Sometimes, most of the time, it's at El Satias, El Satias right there in the, the Iberville, right there by Cedar Lake. Mm-hmm. Everybody seems to go over there and get a get a margarita, tacos. So that's one of my spots. Uh, uh, DJ Boris, Doug Boris, the hunter. Yeah. That Hummer, that's his Hummer. Oh, really? I got that, uh, bought that from his son, DJ, and that was his dad's favorite spot. He passed away Father's Day last year. Hmm. And uh, I, DJ's got a Hummer H1, and I got his dad's H. That's a Glacier, that's a Glacier Blue. They only made 500 of them. Jeez. And um, that's Mr. Doug's favorite truck. But, I mean, it's not mine forever. It's going to go, we're going to build it, we're going to be building a shop at his house hmm. so we can put our stuff in there. Mm-hmm. The kids can take it or whatever. There's yeah. no point in selling. If you if you can do it, don't sell the cars. Right. If you enjoy right. them, and that yeah. truck's got that, that truck's got three hundred thousand miles on it. Jeez. But it's, I mean, it's got all carbon. It's got all carbon fiber interior. Oh. They just only. I mean, that's that light blue color. Yeah. So yeah. Only, yeah. GM only did that color. I think they did that color, in a, a couple C, a CTSs. I think they did a couple vets. Hmm. It's called Glacier Blue. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man, we go to that's me and him go to we eat lunch three days a week together yeah. but oh, El uh, is our spot because it's dad's favorite spot yeah yeah they got pretty good food there size their queso guys get that queso warm mm-hmm. hot now I go there queso is always cold yeah 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 I don't order queso from them anymore right right and that's a factor and, and, get, let's talk about your restaurant in that situation because yeah. now you know you uh how long have you been having uh Port City Cafe on Pass Road oh wait oh wait so uh we're at our uh 16 16 years and uh it's uh it's, it's doing well it's doing well will you expand or you staying right where you're at no we're staying right there right there i've, I've, I've had offers to go to d'iberville and ocean springs and you know we had three locations for for about four years we were on raynor street uh right there by the cta bus station uh it's now uh crawfish crawfish hut uh something, something crawfish right tasty there. tales tasty tales it's not okay. they shut down uh about six months ago oh yeah, they were there pretty good while. He tried. Good while. I mean, he tried. Yeah. He's doing real estate now. Yeah, yeah. It's just like what I was telling you earlier. It's tough to do a restaurant mm-hmm. unless mm-hmm. you're unless you're there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's Stacy. I do uh, boat with boobies with Stacy, Captain Alice. Yeah, 
Stacy never left that restaurant. Her right. and her brother never left. Mm-hmm. It was her and her brother, and then her, her dad. You know, he, he he's there too. But yeah, her brothers her, her brothers uh, cooking, and she's running she's running a uh, restaurant. Yeah, Al, Al sitting at the bar having drinks. He's no, he's passing drinks. <laughs> passing drinks. He's he's look. He's he's a, he's got that face. Oh yeah, he hits at tables. He, oh, he does similar. He does what you do. Yeah, yeah. How? When did you start going up and greeting people? What year was oh, that? Uh, I've always done it. When we when we had the tiny diner, Al used to come and and he he sit at the bar there and 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 have have lunch with us and uh, and it must have been six months maybe a year after us that he opened up Captain Al's right there uh, on Lorraine Lorraine Callen. Oh, you so know? you think he learned a little bit from you? He he, he may have he may have some of his menu kind of kind of looked like our, our our menu. Okay, you know I even talked to Stacy about that you know because uh, I'm sure Stacy was a, was a, was a youngster back then we. Way back when uh, we we were right there in Orange Grove on the, you know, Dito Road and uh, Lorraine Cowan and, and you know, yeah. you know they this new restaurant oh it's it, kicking butt oh man they, they they pile them in there yeah she's getting I mean but it's like I said like she's always there yeah like yeah all, like she's always seven days a week uh huh and she works it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been in there. She's run. She runs food out and she cooks, you know, catering, a bit of everything. And you got to. Do you do catering? Yeah, yeah. Is that still a big part of your business? Uh, it's fallen off since uh, since COVID, but uh, but it, it it's, it's it's getting back. It's getting back. It's uh, you know, it may be ten ten twenty percent of, of our business. You know. Well, you're the sole uh, owner of this place. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's oh, just yeah. you. Yeah. After after I had that partner. You know that partner split up way back. That was it. That was it. And never. Do you, do you never consider again. your wife as a partner? Uh, she she does uh, everything on QuickBooks. She does our payroll, uh, all the taxes and everything. So yeah, she. I guess you could say she's on. She works from home. Yeah, yeah. But now now she has a full time job. She's a she's a uh, like a bookkeeper with. Um, uh, it's a it, it, it was an advanced collision advanced collision here on the coast. Yeah, and they got bought out. And uh, now she's got about 18 shops that she oversees as far as the invoices and, you know, putting out fires and, you know. She never want to work in the restaurant with you. Or she did. She's like, no, Ernest, I'm done with right, you. Right, right. Yeah, we're yeah. going to get a divorce if, you, if I got to keep working <laughs> with you. Yeah. Yeah, she'd always say she was one back in uh, working in the back, and I was the one uh, out talking to the talking to the customers, and, you know, and I'd leave her, I'd leave her back there by herself. So uh, you're more welcome to have water. We you be loose yeah, on the show. Yeah. Oh shoot. I'm I, I'm I'm still 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 okay with but, it. But um. But yeah. Yeah. But the restaurant industry is probably one of the toughest business. Like so. I you know, I just started my insurance office in January. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm I'm staying at insurance. Yeah. 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 I found it to be about a relationship. Um, it is to to get in with certain people. That's mm-hmm. the, that they kind of gatekeep you a little bit. But yeah. I'm not going anywhere. But food. Yeah, I got in a part of that with the blowfly back in the day, mm-hmm. and it's just an industry. It's a it's a different type of industry. Um, you got to have you got to have staff that's that's motivated, mm-hmm. that's not heavy on drugs. Yeah, and this that's, that's key. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, I tough. see some. I see a lot of these people that uh can be phenomenal chefs, phenomenal mm-hmm. chefs, but then they get caught up, strung out on drugs. Yep, and you just it, it's just. I remember, you know, being at the Blowfly, and I remember, you know, d- dealing with, you know, and this is before Jonathan Allen bought it. You know, Jonathan Allen bought it now. Yeah. But dealing with, like, um, a lot of personal stories that affect it coming to work. Mm-hmm. And it just shifts everything. Because you, you go to bed at night wondering mm-hmm. if they're coming the next morning. Yeah. Well, we, you know, I, I've always tried to treat treat my employees like family. And uh, you got to pay him pretty decent. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You got You got to pay him uh, pretty decent. My uh, manager right now, she's been with me since day one, sixteen years. She was there when when it was a pharmacy, uh, Calvert Caraway Pharmacy. When I took it over from the pains, um, all the customers said, "Look, you can terminate everybody in here, but you don't 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 terminate that one right there." And uh, I remember to the day I brought her in the office and I said, "What? What are you making an hour?" She said, seven twenty-five. I said, "No." I said, "I said, I said you're going to you're going to go up to nine dollars and you're going to get forty hours a week," and that was sixteen years ago. Now she makes much more than nine dollars an hour, and the and the front of the restaurant because she don't touch your money. She she, she protects your money. Right. Yeah. You got to have yeah. somebody that protects your book your money. Yeah. And and the quality. I mean, she's she's spot on. 
spot on. But the, in the front, last time we got the parking lot striped, I told the guy striping, I said, look, make me a VIP spot. And the VIP spot is her spot. She's got a brand new 24 Chevrolet Camaro L, uh, LT, LT1. So that's a v, it's a V8. V8. Yeah, oh, yeah. If she bought a V6, I wouldn't even talk to oh, her. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a V8. <laughs> she ordered it the same time I ordered my okay. Corvette. So people come in, and they think the VIP and that Camaro is mine. I said, no, that's hers right there. That's my manager's car. I said, I don't drive a Camaro. I drive a Corvette. You know, but, uh, but oh, yeah. And, you and you have your own spot? No. No. I, well, I don't drive the Corvette to the restaurant. I mean, I, I don't want no dings. <laughs> I mean, I, no, no, no. no it, yeah, it, probably somebody would hit that car because so, they're oh, so low. Oh, yeah. And it's black, so, I mean, it'd be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we've got an alley in between us and the uh, paint store that's right next to us. And uh, and I'll park it in that alley right there. If I, if I drive it up, maybe on Saturday and Sunday I'll drive it up and uh, park it right there. So so what, so what's the hours? When's this thing fire up? Oh, 7 o'clock. Seven in the morning, and at six thirty, we got the old retiree sitting out in the parking lot. I think they try to race to see who's going to be first on the parking lot every morning. I mean, we got two of them that come seven days a week. At seven o'clock, we we don't have to look at the clock. We know what time what time it is because they're pulling on the door. They're shaking the door. You know, I mean, it's it just and and you got so the, that whole so the, is the bar full of regulars? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of regulars. One the the one guy in particular, he was the. Uh, general manager for uh, uh, DeSantos, DeSantos, the uh, the chemical, no Dupont. Dupont, Dupont, yeah, he was he was the uh, manager right there at Dupont. He lives right on the back bay in Biloxi now, and uh, every morning coming, we talk about the Braves. He's from he's from Atlanta. Went to Georgia Tech, went to Georgia Tech College, and uh, you know, smart guy, real smart. But every morning he's sitting in there, and everybody's sitting around just shooting a shooting a breeze. Uh, Leonard Bentz. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Uh, Leonard Bentz, he's, he's well-known here on the coast. He's in there every morning. Um, Sharon Bentz, his daughter, she's Merrill Lynch. And then uh, uh, his son, Little Lenny, he was the uh, public service commissioner for the state of Mississippi. So yeah. most of these people are like your family. Oh, yeah. You know exactly what they're eating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When they walk in, the waitress got the coffee, got the water, or if it's orange juice. Are they juice. good tippers? That's what I want to know. Uh, they, 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 they tip. Okay. Yeah, they, they take care of the girls okay. and, the, and the girls take care of them, you know, cause, uh, uh, one guy in particular, uh, uh Steve Simpson, uh, he's a, a, you know, judge from uh Gulfport. He drives, drives from uh Gulfport to Bluxy over there every morning. And, uh, you know, he used to come downtown with his downtown. Big Simpson. Oh yeah. Like the, oh, yeah. used to work highway patrol Simpson. Yeah. Well, he was over the highway patrol when Haley Barber was the uh, yeah, I was, was governor. Me and him hung out at Captain House a few nights. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Tindall now has a position. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sean closed our house. Yeah. So, yeah, my uh, my stepdad's Scott Levenway. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. stepdad. Really? Yeah. Man, oh, man. He, uh, so he's, so I've set table. Uh-huh. Scott built this table when he was 18 years old. He's 78. Jeez. Um, See that wall? Right. He built that wall. Man. So at the time when all that stuff happened with him, um, I, uh, I wanted, I know that I wanted an open source re- show mm-hmm. and he, he built and in that room over there. I'll show you like a wood area, but he goes, son, I said, I said, I was like, I want to like, I was going to do a, um, a, a podcast with, uh, my buddy Jarrett Seymour in downtown Blux at the way we're cracking. So I always wanted to do radio, but yeah, when Scott, me and Scott got together one night, had a bourbon and then we were like talking about, you know, doing a design how to make this, you know, what it is. Right, right. Like he, and Scott, you know how hard Scott, Scott, Scott works hard. Yeah. He made that wall and Man. yeah, this is, it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of like meaning to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, Scott, uh, I, I met so many people through Scott huh. and my dad, Scott. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I met you through my dad. Oh yeah. Your and, dad's a regular. Yeah. He's a regular. He I'm praying for him every day. Oh, when he came in and showed me his arm. Yeah, said, I've been going crazy, dude. Ooh. I've been having, I've been <clears throat> haven't been drinking. Like I've been having some some nights where I've been having drinks where I've been sad about this, you know what's going on with him. Yeah. So I'm mean, I've been having some rough days. Man. Yeah, because I yeah. don't like because you know him and I know him, but it's like I've been like like I've been sitting here just having a bourbon, mm-hmm. crying. Yeah. You know, because like it, it just well because I mean I'm more like <clears throat> he doesn't you know dad doesn't deserve to to go through that type of pain. Mm-hmm. Dad's not, dad's not an asshole. Yeah. Like, that's one thing about my dad. He's not an asshole. Then he just lost his friend from New Orleans. Yeah, Henry. On top of it. Yeah. But dad's Man. not, that's one thing. Is, uh, dad's not an asshole. No, no. And, you know, I just hate seeing that, like, 
I mean, he like he uh, picked Oliver. They did a Father's Day Saturday. Man, it's dude, it's been killing me. Yeah. I know Dad's strong. I know Dad's gonna get through it, but it still kills me. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, it's like an eye opener. It's like shit. I'm 37. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I got to I see his arm and uh, t- shout out to Tommy Sochez is my uncle taking care of him. Yeah. Uh, but it's just one of the things where it's like, you know, it's an, you know, me and John, you know, we raise money for breast cancer for, you know, for Memorial and I hate seeing people suffer. It's just, mm-hmm. it's when it gets so close. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause like he, dad's the type of person who's like, Hey, I, like, Hey, Ernest, Ernest wants to come on your show. Right. Right. Yeah, dad, if you really want Ernest on the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, Ernest asked me again. I want to be on the show. Yeah. Dad, he goes, can you just give me a day? I said, here, here's the day. He goes, all right. You know, and it's like, because that's how my dad is, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I learned a lot. You know, my dad just, he's, he's been around this coast. He's breezes coast. I mean, my dad's a person that does eat at your restaurant as a regular. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He looks forward to it. Right. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and now we've got your sister. Your sister's in there waiting tables. Really? Summer. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. And again, that was from your dad. Your dad came in and said, Hey, you know, she, uh, I think she was a bartender at IP Golden Nugget. One of them. How's she working out? Oh, good. That's really good. good. That's really good. good. Yeah, yeah. Them and, girls can uh, make some good money in the cafe now. Oh, look. If you get your regulars together, these uh, these older fellas, you know, if 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 you got an attractive waitress, oh, look, they they gonna take care of them. You can't they're get mad at them. them. You can't get mad at them. The other day, I went to lunch with my friends. I went to Hooters. Yeah. I wasn't happy though. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's attractive. It's just, the looks. It's not. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, I mean, yeah. we're still. Like them older guys that look, they just like, I mean, mm-hmm. they, they like just, to look. Yeah, they want somebody to talk to. But I'd know? rather them be at your restaurant than at their house dying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was like something Scott, that's why Scott still is an attorney. Yeah. Because he will, he's just like, that dude outworks me. Mm-hmm. He actually, Scott, so Scott's getting his insurance license, uh, Levenway. Yeah. And he's going to start working with me in insurance. Man. Who well, he wants to teach me some stuff. And he's 78, you said. Mm hmm. Oh, boy. But he still practices law. Yeah. You know, Miss, Mr. Leo Seal used to come in the restaurant, downtown Gulfport, mm-hmm. and he was in his late 70s. And, I, and I, I'd and say, Mr. Leo, when when you going to hang it up? When are you going to retire? He said, and do what? He said, I'm not ready to go, you know, hang out in a recliner, hang out in a recliner. He said, I, I said, I, I got to get up and get out the house, move around. Scott, so, for, Scott, at his age, Scott moves like he's in his mid-60s. Yeah. Even, like, I mean, he just does. He, um, I got him rocking a, a, Nike's. Yeah, I mean, he's, we still got the same apartment in Jackson. Man, I think I think Tyndall's right by him up there. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. he gets up. He Scott Scott still works them twelve hour days. Still Golly. types on a t- like still types and yeah. But I was like, knew huh. when, when we do the insurance, I knew that I wanted to do my own insurance when I when I separate it to have an I, I wanted to have like, you know, Dad's really good at sales, so Dad's helps with that. Mm-hmm. And then Scott is just he's. I mean, he's been in the business so long. Yeah. And I was just like, hey, man, why don't you come and do some insurance with me? I mean, Scott st- Scott ain't going to retire ever. Yeah. yeah. So this is going to be a good, this is going to be a great decade for us to, um, I can learn a lot from somebody that's been through yeah. a lot of business. Yep. And that helps, too, when you got somebody that you can fall back on, that you can learn learn from. And I mean, it's he's good, a big good. part of a lot of, like, the aquarium. He's the one that got, got the money for the aquarium. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so good contact. Uh, the good airport, contact. you know, he's 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 been in a lobbyist for most of these cities. Yeah. And yeah. and Rick Carter said this on an in, on interview on uh, Ricky's show one time when he first got on. Rick Carter said, if you want to get something done in Jackson, you call Scott Levenway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and th- it's cool to have that person because he's like history to me. Mm-hmm. But I, I know that how I want to operate this insurance business is I want to hit it that way. Yeah, yeah. So here's my time that while my dad, I have my dad, and I know my dad's going to beat his situation. But you got Scott Duron that's been busting his ass, running the car business for years. That mm-hmm. is, a sm- he can sell you, he can sell you a stick. Oh yeah, oh he's, he's a salesman. Oh yeah. So I got that knowledge I can learn, and then I got Scott that knows legal contract, mm-hmm. and and how to network people. Yeah, yeah, good combination. I'm gonna figure this out. The dad, but both of them talk and hang like. I call both for advice. Yeah, our insurance office is called Oliver Scott Insurance. Hmm. My middle name, my it's my son Oliver downstairs. Uh-huh. Yeah. My name is Jordan Scott. Uh huh. My dad is Darren Scott. Scott Levenway is Richard Scott. Damn. So it's Richard Scott Levenway, 
Darren Scott Duron, Jordan Scott Duron, <laughs> Oliver Scott. <laughs> a lot of Scots. And Oliver Scott is their their grandbaby. Right. So I mean, Dad takes Man. Oliver to the beach. Uh, Levenway takes him crabbing. Hmm. I mean, yeah. This little kid's got. He's I mean, busy. Well, he's got he's got, he's got great grandparents. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's what matters. I mean, me doing this insurance thing is about family. Mm-hmm. I'm at a point now where, you know, I, I have to do this insurance business and I have to be successful because it's not just about me. It's about my family. Yeah. And I found out that, guys, I found out that insurance, if you want to be successful, it's not a bad business to get into. Mm-hmm. You get a book of business, you treat your customers right, and you can take care of your family. Yeah. I'm yeah. like you. I'm just going to be, if I get me like a nice pickup truck and everybody in my family's eating and right. everybody's happy. Yeah. But I'm going to have a nice vehicle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I'm, I'm not moving out of this house. Right. right. I don't care. I, I love where I live, but I'm going to, t- I want to be able to take care of my family. It, 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 and there's nothing wrong with being simple. No. Nothing wrong with being simple. I, you know, I mean, uh, you know, you, you can have some nice things and, 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 and being simple, that's, that's nothing wrong. It's like, it's like at my restaurant. You know, we, we've got, we've got tables in there. They don't all mix and match. I mean, we, we've got chairs. They don't all mix, mix and, you know, they, they don't match. I mean, we've got, we got different chairs that, that, you know, mix and, you know, we might have a tall chair, we might have a small chair. But, you know, that's why I say it. It's just, you know, we, we're just a simple operation, you know, good, just, good food. But the same way you started where, I mean, you, you have made it, ha, ha, you know, you were broke when you started in your 30s mm-hmm. to now you still think you're broke. Yeah, but you just show you like being at work. I want to do the same thing. Right. I just want to be able to t- take care of my parents. Yeah. You know, yeah. So like right now, you know, we're probably gonna be doing a benefit for dad. Yeah. I I, I told him it'd probably be a good idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that love him. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, so we might be doing a benefit to you know help him. We're gonna get, we're gonna get through this, but just it's just a situation where it's eye opening for me. Yeah. Because I do yeah. have si- little sisters. Mm-hmm. You know, I got Ramsey. Hits Ramsey. Yeah, she's going to get her insurance license. I'm making her get at 21. Oh. I'm making her to get insurance. Yeah, because she she don't want to do medical code. She want maybe do medical coding. Maybe do this. I'm like no. Right. One thing I, sh- I would have to learn is just get to work. Uh huh. Which I dropped like I dropped off dropped out and went to an art institute. Hmm. And I, but I mean I dropped out and went straight to work. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's some p- people miss miss that is like everything takes work. Oh yeah. And you learn a lot in the restaurant. If guys, you ever feel if you're looking, are you mm-hmm. hiring? Oh, we're always hiring. If you're looking for a, a job, you yeah. need, go up there and see Ernest. Yep, yep. You learn yep. a lot in the food industry. Oh, and 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 you know, and we we qualifications wise, you know, I'm, I I we can bring somebody in brand new and work with them, train them, and um, I mean, I, I've got dishwashers at 16 years old, you know. And I mean, just coming in, learning how to do that, and 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 working your way up as far as the line cook and you know making burgers and stuff like that. I mean, that that alone is is a uh, is, is is good. How long did it take you to figure out how to run a restaurant and actually like run it to where it it just feels good to unlock the door? Well, being in the corporate world with Taco Bell and Popeyes, and I worked for Wendy's for for a while also, but uh, going through all of their training and and you know, understanding, you know, the, what, what, you know, as far as the health department, what, what the requirements are and uh, stuff like that. Um, and then the other thing as far as under, understanding food costs, understanding labor costs, and, and, and then putting a team together. I've always been big in sports. So I've always been, I coach my, my son in soccer and basketball, baseball. And uh, so I always look at putting people in the right place, hiring the right people and, and, that's a big part as far as to unlock the doors, like you're saying. You got to have the right people, and and have them trained, and them and them know what your expectations are. That's that's a big thing right there, and and myself, me, my biggest thing is customer service. When people walk in the door, hey, how you doing today? You know, I mean, right off the bat, you got to just hit them with that greet. Even you know? if you're having a bad day. Yeah, yeah. Even if you even if you're having a bad day, you know. And, and sometimes if you're having a bad day, just still, if you just say, hey, how you doing today? You know, because a lot of people walk in the door, they're having a bad day. You know, I mean, I, I, I've seen them, boy. You know, and there's some of them that you can talk to, and, and it's it's going to be yes, no, leave me alone, let me eat my food. You know, I mean, it's, it's you have some like that, that that are having a bad day, and, you know, you just let them, uh, let them enjoy their meal and, and hit the door. You don't kind of kind of push it. But... Uh, you know, the, the biggest thing as far as, as, like you're saying, to unlock that door, 
It's just making sure that your, your quality is ready. Make sure that your staff is, uh, you know, you got a good team. And, and we've got people that have been there nine, ten years. I yeah, mean, but how do you make it happen for seven days? Oh. I mean, hey, like. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, most I mean, mo- most of them ain't seven days. No, no. And and we were six days for a while. We were six days for a while. We, we were seven, and then when COVID hit, we cut it back to six uh, just because of staffing. And then you had all these people out with COVID. I mean, there was days you might have had two, three, four employees because, uh, you know, this 14-day, you know, you got COVID. Okay, you got to take two weeks off, even though the second week you're probably good to go, you know. So so we, we, we fought that quite a bit. And, uh, you know, and, and, and in our case in COVID, you know, we didn't shut down. I mean, we, we closed on Sundays, but we kept the restaurant open. We kept the, the doors open, you know. Um, there was no, you know, lock the doors and you got to eat in your car. You know, we were letting people come in. Our dining room is 4,000 square feet. So, you know, we had plenty of six foot social distancing. And uh, what's the, t- uh, how many seats are in that restaurant? Uh, we've got uh, 20 at the bar and then we've got uh, 80, uh, 85 dining area. So 100 here. altogether. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, 100. A few, few extras. The fire, fire marshal is the, 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 the uh, occupancy is at 99. So, you know, we, we're, 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 we're right there. A couple short people will be fine. Make two out of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we try to pile in as many as we can, you know. Have you had but, days? What's, uh, so, I mean, I know it's got to affect you. Some days you go in there and there's nobody in there. Or yeah. does it always stay pretty packed? Uh, there's days when we have breaks, you know. And, Just to make and, you sad? No, no, believe, believe it or not, I, I, I kind of say to myself, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy to have this break. You know, sometimes it's, it's okay, but sometimes it, it's a grind. I mean, every, every day, every day. And the kitchen's not that big. Oh no. Oh, it's like a waffle house. Yeah. I mean, you sit at the bar and you can watch everything be cooked right in front of you, you know? And, uh, I mean, for the volume we do and to be cooking on a 36 inch grill, uh, it's, 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 it's remarkable to, for, for the, and, you know, and, and, and all we've got, we don't have, we've got two fryers. And they're countertop fryers. They're not like these big fryers that McDonald's has and Popeyes and all those places. I mean, they're just two small countertop fryers. And uh, you know, we change the oil every other day. And uh, you know, I mean, during Lent, we'll we'll cook hundred pounds, hundred pounds of catfish a day. And we've got two countertop fryers. And I just say to myself, how in the hell do we? Who makes we, the menus? Uh, I I I do. Uh, I've got a, I've got a, an employee that's a pretty sharp with the. Uh, with the computer and, you know, she'll, she'll go in there and, you know, we, we, we pretty much, we do a lot in-house. You know, I have people that ask me, you know, who's your linen service? I said, linen service? We do the linen. I said, we don't, we don't have a linen service. Sam sells floor mats. They sell towels. We buy the towels from Sam's and, uh, you know, when they dirty, we'll, we'll toss them out. You get 60 towels over there for 19 bucks. You know, we use the linen service for, for a while. It was four or $500 a month. I cut that cost out. I said, no, it's hard. I'd rather buy the 60 towels at Sam's, you know, at $19 a pop and uh, go through, you know, maybe three, four of them a month. And we're saving for a chef. Uh, no, no, we don't, we don't, we don't have a chef. My manager is pretty much, you know, she, I guess you could call her, her call her our chef, but uh, I've got four cooks, four cooks. She's kind of the, the lead cook. So it's not really a, you know, a chef, uh, you know, we, we're we not like fine dining or anything like that. I mean, we're just a simple, simple. I mean, it, you say cafe, but also it's seven to seven, right? Seven to eight. Seven to eight. So yeah. it's it's pretty much a restaurant cafe. Yeah. 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 We, we do breakfast from seven to 11 and then we do lunch from 11 to four and then dinner four to eight. And our, and our lunch menu, it runs from 11 to eight. We, we just run our, our lunch menu yeah, all the way to eight. Get that roast beef and. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You can get the pot roast. You can get red beans and rice with fried catfish. Yeah, BLT. Oh yeah, yeah. We put bacon on it too. Some place you order BLT and you're like, "Where's the bacon?" I mean, one of my favorite spots is Renee's Deli. Yeah, you know Renee. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. That's one of my spots. Yeah, I, they got good stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's it's her, her, and three staff. Uh huh. Uh huh. What's uh? There's what four tables? Five. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not a big place, yeah. but they're simple. You know, that's, that's the, that's the key to this thing. Keep it simple. Yeah. I watch these places, they open up and they take on so much debt, so much debt initially, you know, and, and then you're struggling to survive just to pay the debt. And in our case, we've been there 16 years. We have no debt. 
No debt. I mean, everything. The equipment's paid for, tables, chairs paid for, the POS system's paid for, you know. Uh, now we're just working to pay off the court. You ever go on vacations? Yeah. How yeah. often do you do a vacation? Uh, about once, twice a year. Last year was our best one we did. We went to Alaska. We did the cruise, went to Seattle, went on the Alaskan cruise. Were you, like, nervous about your restaurant? Uh, there's a, there's a little nervous You seem like a person that would be super nervous because you're, like, hands-on. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, as long as nobody steals your money. That's the, right. one of the most important things about the restaurant business because of people taking the, mm-hmm. you know, the $5 here, the $5 there. That adds up. Yeah. Well, the good thing now is uh, the credit cards have gotten so prevalent. I mean, on every 1000 we take in, we might take in $100 in cash. So there's not a whole lot of cash, uh, you know, that, that's, that's being, being sw- swapped in the, in the restaurant. Everything is so much credit. That's why you see all these places that have gone to this 3.5%, you know, add-on for the credit cards. Is that the, what you charge? Yeah, yeah. Gotta, you got to do it, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I mean, we were paying 4000 a month, 4000 a month credit card fees. That's right off the bottom line, you know. So, so we had to do the 3.5%, and still it, it doesn't cover 100% of that fee. But it does cover enough to where you know you, you're not you're not you're not taking such of a big hit at the end of the month, you know. Because I mean they they just zap it right out of your account right out of your account at the end of the month, you know. It's so you make you pay your rent and then you get hit with that four thousand. You're like it's like a double whammy, you know. Yeah, it was like that with the mattress store. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm kind of, I mean, I kind of just that insurance. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been enjoying the insurance, and I'm I'm not leaving it. Like I've, yeah. I've kind of started geeking out on it. I, I mean, I still do some some little marking here and there, but mark that's that's just because I like creating stuff. Yeah, yeah. I take satisfaction of watching, like, you know, making a concept for a business and watching it grow. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my things is like, uh, and I like photography, so I get to shoot. But if if you love it, it's really not a job. Yeah, yeah. And and that's and that's how it is there. I I love going in, uh, you know. Last week, and 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 the good thing about the restaurant business is you never know who's going to walk in the door. You know, la- last week I see this guy walk in. He's got a Mississippi State uh, polo shirt on, and I look at him and I say, "Boy, I know I know this guy. I, I'm, I'm trying to recognize where do I know him." So I walk up to the table like I do, introduce myself, and he says, "He says I'm Richard Wi- Richard Williams, the head coach of Mississippi State basketball team." You know, and uh, he's not now. You got a picture wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, t- I took a picture and posted it on Facebook, you know. And, uh, you know, we talked probably about an hour or so. He's coming back to the, the weekend of uh, July 4th, bringing it's, some it's friends in. It's your customer in. service. It's your personality. Yeah, yeah. And that's what brings people. Because mm-hmm. they don't have that anymore. They don't, I mean, no. they, I mean, they, there's places like uh, uh, Toronto's, like I was saying, my buddy, district, uh, the District Coffee Company. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is one of his merch. And yeah. um, Tim and his brother, uh, Cade, that own it, and they used to own the uh, the Eagle Island Daiquiri in Long Beach. Hmm. So they got this coffee house, and they're actually open one in Pascoa. Man, but it's one brother lives in his condo here, other brother lives on East Beach. They both got golf carts. They drive to work. They pick up all their stuff. Right. They don't. They work. They, they work. Um, it's six days a week. They never miss a day. Right. Cade runs the uh, the uh, the uh, the coffees, mm-hmm. the coffees and and uh, cash register. And Paige runs. Uh, Paige runs the food. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I mean, yeah. but they have a system. Right, right. And uh, K, uh, Paige is talking. He's like, if something happens to Cade, I'm burning this thing down. <laughs> that, that's how. That's how they work as a team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's just cool because like I go in there and work there. Yeah. I'll go help them because I, I like seeing it. Right. The energy. Yeah. And I always yeah. go. I always go. Hey guys, you enjoy our service? Leave us a review. <laughs> Leave us a Google review. Right, right. And they start laughing like, let's leave. <laughs> and you got you got 1,100 reviews. Yeah. At oh, a yeah. 4.5. Oh, yeah. That is yeah. some powerful shit right oh. there, dude. You know, we, we I, like I said, I, I hit every table. And, uh, you know, I, I, I say, look, if, 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 if it's not right, we're going to make it right. And uh, and, I, and I'll even tell them, you know, please leave us a review. And, uh, and, and, they'll, and they'll say, hey, you, you, we're, we're going to leave you a review. And, uh, and I get all the re- re- reviews on my email or I'll get them, you know, on the, uh, 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 you know, yeah, the emails and everything. And, uh, and I read them and I even, I even, re- you know, respond, respond to them, you know, and, uh, and they'll come back in the restaurant and, and they'll say, Hey, you know, I, I sent you that review. I said, yeah, I responded to it. And they said, yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks. But, you know, and, and, and that's what, what helps our business tremendously too, because when people come from out of town, they go on that restaurants nearby 
And the, the higher your review is, the, the more that you're in the top, top five. And uh, so breakfast restaurants, we come up like neither number one or number two based on the reviews. Yeah, 1,100. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we get a, we get a lot of uh, a lot of people that's uh, commenting commenting about the, yeah, about the I port mean, city. I seen that. I was like, wow. I was like, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's cool. I think places like here, I think they're, uh, hopefully they come back, but a mm-hmm. lot of them already went away. Yeah. And that's a sad truth about that. You know, that's like like going to see, going to Toronto's and, mm-hmm. you know, a place like yours, um, Renee's Deli, uh, Captain Owl's. Um, yeah. You, I mean, look, even Woody's got the owners at Woody's and Gupware. Every time I go in there, he's, he's, he's carrying out food. Uh-huh. uh-huh. You know, that, that's cool to see. Right, right. You know. Um, it just means you care. You yeah, care, but I mean, but, but to your level where you're not a franchise. Right. You're, I mean, I look at your Facebook and you have a Facebook, but it's, you're mm-hmm. not big social media. Right, right. So if you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, we we we've just got so many regulars that 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 like I say come er, come every day. Uh, I mean, we we've even got the regulars that will call and say I'm not coming today. I said, I, you know, I joke with them. I say, I said, you you guys are better than than our employees. At least you call and say you're not coming in. Do they have their own set spots? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll sit up at the bar. It's kind of like being in school, you know. Like, when what you if went, I go in there? It's, what if I get there earlier than them and sit at that person's oh, spot? Oh, you're not you're not gonna beat them. <laughs> is know? that bad? <laughs> oh yeah. Like I say, they're they're in the park at like six thirty, six forty five in the morning. I need and, to, uh, I need to get up there because I've been doing uh, Saturday. I did. I went with my camera, uh, my phone, and I had these mics, and I uh, went to a couple restaurants. I need to get up there. I mean, you go eat breakfast, and uh, I got these mics that we can li- li- sit up. Yeah, we we'll just have breakfast together at the bar. Yeah, and there just you talk, and, and so we can. You know, I mm-hmm. want to do some of that because like I miss like unwrapped. Yeah, like the old TV t- uh, shows. Oh yeah, Food Network shows. Right, right, right. So I, I have fun. I like being. I like. I love this coast, and I mean that's something that you'll you'll find with me and you can ask anybody. I love this coast, and mm-hmm. I I like highlighting these small businesses. Yeah, yeah, I really do. Yeah, yeah I really t- I take pride in it. Um, mm-hmm. We always talk about them on the show. Yeah, and that's that's important because I just know that the margins ain't super high. Right. Oh, they're not. Especially they're not. in food because you got to turn that food. Yeah, that food's got yeah. an expiration date. Yeah, and 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 that's one good thing in our case that we go to Sam's every day. Um, so, so the salad mix I buy today has already been used for lunch. So tomorrow morning when I go to Sam's again, that salad mix I buy in the morning is going to be used for lunch. What if Sam's and, changes some of the ingredients? Have you uh, ran across that yet? The thing I run, I, I learned about Sam's is, is they'll get a good product and six months later, they'll phase it out. And, and then I'm saying, what, like Taco what Bell. Yeah. 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 Like Taco Bell gives you a good taco and they uh-huh. exit off the list. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then see, Sam's is always moving stuff around. I tell the general manager, I said, you know, when you move something around, we as customers think you're out of it. You know, no, we, we do it on purpose so that you go down a different aisle and you buy something else while you're looking for that item. I said, I, I don't understand that concept. You know, I'm trying to trap you and you got a time limit. Yeah. What time do you yeah. get to Sam's at? Oh, they open at eight. And my goal is to get there at eight and you go by, you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I go. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I, I go. And, uh, so what do you drive? What do you drive there? Oh, I've got a, a Silverado pickup truck. So you don't take the vet? No, no, no. You don't load the vet up? <laughs> no, <he's, laughs> they ain't not going in that vet. No, boy. No, no, shoot. I'll tell you what. No, yeah. I mean, uh, so you go. Yeah, yeah. So you go at 8, takes you about an hour? Yeah, I'm usually back to the restaurant by 9.30, maybe 9.45, you know. But, I mean, you know, they, they cut our pork steaks for us. Tuesdays we do baked pork steaks. Do you get their eggs too? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So everything Sam's pretty oh, much. Oh yeah, yeah. We probably get ninety percent from Sam's, and then we get about ten percent from a Wood Frutica. They're out of Birmingham, kind of like Cisco. And it's uh, hard for letting. It's hard for some uh, some of the people to come in and try to earn your business though, because of you having them during Katrina and and Sam's being there for you. Yeah. Right. Is that right, same right. GM still there? No. No. He's actually in Metairie now. But yeah, you, you got personal touch because they they helped you. Mm-hmm. So you're oh, loyal. Yeah. yeah. Do you have yeah. to explain that when people come in like? Coastal Foods or one of them? Oh, they, they, they all come in and say, look, we can save you time. I said, look, I'm not worried about time. I'm worried about the money. You know, I, I, Cisco, for example, they come in. I say, I say, if you can save me 5% on my food costs, I said, 5% to me is about $50,000 a year. I said, because I, I just for example, on a 20 ounce drink, 20 ounce cups, Sam's has got a case of 500. They sell it for about $33. 
If Sam's runs out and we got to order with Wood Furtica, that same case is $55 to have it delivered on an 18 wheeler truck, you know, cause you got to pay the sales guy to take the order. So he gets a cut out of it. Then, then you got the 18 wheeler, you're paying for the fuel where in my truck, I'm writing off the mileage at the end of the year. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm benefiting the price and I'm benefiting the mileage on my truck. And then, and then, and then they deliver to you. And on the invoice, it says fuel charge. You're getting hit with a fuel charge. And you feel, and it's a big part of your day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and while I'm in Sam's, I'm meeting customers in Sam's, you know, so I'm talking in Sam's and I'm wearing my Port City Cafe shirt and, you know, and people see me and they say, man, I said, Port City Cafe, Bluxy, Mississippi, and they, you know, Pass Road. And uh, so it's a lot, a lot of networking and, you know, just, just a lot, a lot of PR. No, I mean, it's yeah. smart. Yeah. Yeah. It's really smart. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, would you uh, like to come back on in the future? Oh, yeah. Oh, All yeah, right, well, I'm, absolutely. Uh, I'm going uh, to be tagging this guy and put his links in the, uh, on the social media. This is uh, uh, Mr. Ernest, uh, and he's local, yep. and he's been in business for a long time with a cafe that's still successful. Mm-hmm. And he just told you, if you want to be successful at it, keep it simple. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the biggest thing. Keep it simple and keep your debt down. You know, because I, I, I get so many customers that will say, well, your prices are cheap. You got, you got cheap prices here. And I say, look, I'd rather be busy with cheap prices than not busy with expensive prices. And, 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 our, and our key to cheap prices is having no debt, you know. And then shopping at Sam's, too, because Sam's, the prices are much lower than Cisco and all these different places. So, you know, if we, if we can buy cheaper, why not pass it down to the customer? You know, and, that, you heard and, that, it there. and that's, that's, that's what I believe with, I, I believe in doing right there. All right. Well, I'll have them back on guys. And I uh, just want to say thank you. And uh, like I said, I'll tag them in there and uh, y'all have a good night. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. We are for home, auto, muscle, builders, rips, and life is rich. Oliver's good. I for shots is rich. Good job.